you can save yourselves a lot of time and energy um, not trying to memorize every single solitary note and the fingering or the slide position uh, on the trombone, um, but rather by memorizing the natural harmonic series for the instrument first. Because if you can memorize this uh, very, really not very uh, long series of notes and intervals, the intervals will, are even more valuable because when you transpose them and you apply them to different brass instruments, then you can understand how they work too. But if you can just memorize this uh, short number of, of notes and get them right and understand a principle that um, I describe as sort of a metaphor for a string instrument, then you can, I can ask you to give me uh, any note. I can say, okay, give me a G flat in the bass clef staff at the, you know, the top space of the bass clef staff. What position is that in? And you, because you know your natural harmonic series and you can count down from first position chromatically with this technology that I'm about to describe, you can tell me where that note is. You can even maybe sometimes find alternate positions for notes this way too. So this system basically um, is that you, first you start with the natural harmonic series. So everything is in bass clef. We're gonna do bass clef in this hand and then I'll do, actually, I'll go ahead and go from bass clef to treble clef. You'll understand that the trombone players generally read in bass clef, although we'll talk later about tenor and alto. Um, uh, and treble clef and, and even mezzo soprano clef. These are all clefs that I can read. And, um, but we, mostly your, your students are going to be using bass clef. Okay. So the natural harmonic series, does anybody know what the, the fundamental pitch in the first position of the trombone is? B flat, that's right. So that's a pedal B flat, we call it pedal B flat. It's the lowest note that you can play in first position on the instrument. Okay. Um, don't be confused by um, fundamental pitches and overtones um, or partials. Sometimes we would talk about this as the fundamental, and then the next note above that would be the first overtone, even though it's the second available playable note. Some people talk like that, and I can't stand that because why would I call the second thing one and then call the third thing two, and then after that, I mean, I'm in this like mind game with myself trying to figure it out. So I talk in terms of partials. It's the first partial. It's the first thing that you can play, okay? Um, pedal B flat, we call it pedal B flat, it's the lowest note. But you can just call it B flat, it's fine. Okay, what's the next note above that that's available on the instrument, anybody know? The next B flat. The next B flat, that's right. So without getting into this, we could talk all day long about the natural harmonic series, how it works, how other instruments, um, how it manifests itself in other instruments. Um, if you just will memorize what I'm writing right now, and it's in your book, so it shouldn't be too hard to memorize. If you'll memorize this, then you should be able to um, play everything. It's kind of a dubious partial right there. Just play almost everything that's ever going to be required of you if you can play these notes and, and within this range on the tenor trombone. The bass trom tenor trombone can play lower than this. Um, and I'm going to show you that. The bass trombone can play lower than this. They can both play lower and higher than this, but in the practical range of the instrument, um, you're covering a lot of ground with, with just those pitches. This is available and pretty much only this. So bugles don't have keys, they're not usually, most of them are not chromatic, they're just, you just have this one natural harmonic series that they can use. So most brass instruments can do stuff like that. They can play all those bugle calls. I think you know, pretty much all the ones that we use, trombone, trumpet, horn, uh, tuba, they all can do that. So, what I like to do is have people memorize this and understand this this way. Think of it this way. How does a stringed instrument work? You have a string, it's a vibrating column. You can pluck the string and it's going to vibrate at the fundamental pitch that that length of string will vibrate at, right? How do we achieve different pitches on a string instrument? Lovely, you shorten it, 
I like that. You shorten it. it, it, it some people would, would say we divide it, and it's true we are dividing it, but we're, we're deadening half of it, only using the other half as a, a shorter length of vibrating column. That's how the trombone works. In first position, it's as small as it's going to get, but as we go out, we're lengthening it. It's kind of the reverse, actually, if you think about it. We're lengthening it. We're making it a bigger, longer bugle, okay? So, string instruments usually have like four strings, and they're really long. The string itself will take you a long way. And even, you know, somewhere in the middle of that string, you can switch up to another string where it's the same pitch and kind of go back, and you can do stuff and kind of not have to use the full length of the string. Um, imagine a string instrument that only had a very short length and it was the length of a tritone. That's what the trombone can do. So what we have is we've got seven positions on the trombone roughly. First is all the way here. Second. Beyond that, we run out of slides. So we've got the length of our arms to deal with here. So um, you've got from any given note, like that, I played all those notes on the same partial. If I start on this B flat, it's going to take me down to this E natural. It's a tritone. Okay? B flat to A. B flat's in first, A is in second. Okay? Um, a flat is in third. G is in 4, G flat is in 5, F is in 6, and E is in 7. Are you all kind of picking this up? Kind of understanding it? Does anybody need me to back up? Because that's cool. I can back it. I can totally back up. No? For now? Okay. So, what we can do is we can find out anywhere on that journey from B flat to E, if there's a note that's between B flat and E, we can find out what position that note is. By going back to first position, if we know our natural harmonic series in first position, and we know to count down half steps. Is that logical? So if you're a brass player, don't answer this question, but if you're somebody who needs to do this counting, um, where would a G be, for instance, if B flat's in first and E is in seven? Close. Start again. B flat's in first. What note's in second? A. A. What note's in third? Right, what note's in? Four. four. Brilliant. You got it. Good. So that G that we just talked about is in fourth position. So I skipped a step. I, I, I kind of helped you by saying, okay, I gave you a hint and said it's between these two notes. The way to use this system is to at, find the note that you want and then find the next note above it in the natural harmonic series in first position. That way you know how to find it, which one to start counting down from. Like if you went to F, it wouldn't be practical because when you start counting down from F, you get E, E flat, D, you're going in the wrong direction. You need G, it's above F, right? So the note you're looking for is gonna be below a first position note, unless it is a first position note, right? But, you know, sometimes that can happen too. Like if you take this D and it's, it, it goes all the way down to this G sharp in the bass clef, Okay, from this D down to this G sharp, there actually is a B flat that's not in first position. There's one in five. So D, D flat, C, B natural, B flat. It's an alternate position for that note. It's not our favorite position that we would use on any given day if we didn't have to, but it's a great note. It's a lovely note. If you're out there and you're playing something in G flat, you know, it's nice. I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna do that instead of. It's way harder to do it that way. Okay. Um, does this make sense? Okay. What if I wanted you to tell me where um, a low G, an octave lower than that G, is? So that would be this G. It's still in four. That's right. And, and what, what note did you use in first position to count down from? This B flat, right? Okay. What if I wanted to know where, um, where uh, let's see, where this note was. This is an E flat, and still in bass clef, E flat above middle C. Where would that be? Brass players are like, 
third? Yeah. Right. What note did you use in first position to find it? The F. The F, right. Good. Are we all figuring this out, kind of? Okay. If anybody's scratching their heads, it's fine. You can email me or call me or we can talk about it later. It's cool. I get it. If you get off on the wrong thing and you're thinking and everybody is, you know, moving on, sometimes it can be sort of embarrassing to raise your hand. That's why I'm taking this because I was hoping maybe I could uh, distill it down to the finer points and like maybe, you know, uh, post it for you.